Welcome back. In this video, I will discuss what is linear discriminant analysis, why it is required, and what are the different steps in linear discriminant analysis with simple example. Linear discriminant analysis, also known as normal discriminant analysis or discriminant function analysis, is a dimensionality reduction technique that is commonly used for supervisor classification problems. LDA is used to project the higher dimension features into lower dimensional features. Uh, for example, if you have a data in uh, 2D and you want to convert that particular data into 1D, we can use linear discriminant analysis. We have already studied another feature reduction technique that is known as principal component analysis. The link for that video is given in the description below. The main difference between PCA and LDA is PCA is uh, used for unsupervised classification problems but LDA is used to solve supervised classification problems. Let's uh, take an example. Uh, in this case, uh, the data is shown on 2D space. Uh, this data contains uh, two classes. One is represented with red color, another one is represented with uh, black color. Now, if you want to classify this particular data with the help of a straight line, that is uh, not possible actually, because uh, if you draw a line anywhere, uh, you will not be able to classify the data completely in this case. So in this uh, case, uh, uh, what we need to do is uh, we need to convert this uh, 2D data into a uh, 1D data so that uh, we will be able to classify this data completely. So uh, we can use LDA for that particular purpose. Uh, first, what we do is uh, uh, the two dimension data, that is uh, the dimensions are represented with X and Y in this case. Uh, we will create a new axis and we will project this data onto the new axis here uh, so that uh, we will reduce the 2D data into 1D data in this case. Now the question comes in front of us is how can we do that particular thing? That we will discuss uh, uh, with the help of uh, a simple example in the next video. But uh, whenever we want to convert the higher dimensional data into lower dimensional data, uh, we need to follow or we need to consider the two criteria. The first one is uh, we need to maximize the distance between the means of the two classes. Uh, let's assume that we have two classes. Uh, we want to maximize or we should maximize the distance between the means of those uh, two classes here. Uh, that is, uh, let's assume that these are the two classes here. Uh, the mean may be present here and the mean is over here. We should be, uh, we should uh, maximize the uh, distance between these two means in this case. That's the first and foremost uh, criteria. The second criteria is uh, we need to minimize the variation within this class. For example, uh, the variation within the class should be as small as possible and uh, the distance between the means of the two classes should be as large as possible. These are the two criteria we need to consider uh, whenever we convert the data from higher dimensional space into lower dimensional space here. Now we will discuss what are the different steps uh, uh, we need to use uh, to convert higher dimensional data into lower dimensional data. Uh, in LDA. The first one is uh, we need to compute the class means of uh, dependent variables. Uh, let's assume that we have uh, two classes. So we need to uh, calculate the two means in this case for uh, the class one and the mean for the class two here. Uh, this is the formula we use to calculate the mean. That is uh, mu1 is equal to 1 divided by n1 summation of x where x belongs to a class here. For example, uh, w1 is the one class. Uh, we need to sum, uh, add all those uh, data which is present in that particular class divided by total number of examples in that class. Similarly, we have to do it for the second class. If we have another class over here, we need to do it for the third class and so on. Once you compute the class uh, means for the dependent variable, uh, the next step is to calculate the covariance matrix for the class variables. Uh, the covariance matrix is calculated using uh, this formula. Uh, I have written one formula here that is uh, S1. S1 is nothing but uh, uh, the coherence matrix for uh, class 1 in this case. Similarly, we have to do it for class 2 and so on. So, S1 is equal to summation of uh, x minus mu1, where x is the data, mu1 is the mean of that particular class, uh, x minus mu1 transpose in this case, uh, over all uh, examples present in that particular uh, class here. Similarly, we have to do it for the second and uh, third class and so on. Once we have calculated the coherence matrix uh, for all the classes, uh, Let's assume that in this case we have only two classes. We need to compute uh, within class a scatter matrix. That is nothing but sum of all those particular covariance matrices here. In this case, we have uh, two classes. So we will add the 
covariance matrix of uh, both the classes here that is s1 and s2 so that we will get uh, within class uh, scatter matrix uh, that is represented with this uh, equation here once uh, within class uh, scatter matrix is calculated the next step is to calculate the between class scatter matrix that is uh, sb is always equivalent to mu1 minus mu2 means are already calculated uh, multiplied by mu1 minus mu2 transpose here so once you calculate this uh, between class uh, scatter matrix the next step is to calculate the eigenvalues and eigenvectors with the help of uh, this uh, within class scatter matrix and between class scatter matrix here now the question comes in front of us is how to calculate the eigenvalues the eigenvalues are calculated using this formula that is uh, within class scatter matrix in inverse multiplied by between class scatter matrix multiplied by w which is equivalent to lambda w here and once you solve this uh, equation you will be getting uh, the lambda values for each classes for example if you have two classes you will get lambda 1 and lambda 2 if you have three classes you will get lambda 1 lambda 2 and lambda 3 so on now once you calculate the eigenvalues the next question is to calculate the eigenvectors before we calculate the eigenvectors uh, what we need to do here is uh, we need to select or we need to first sort the eigenvalues uh, let's assume that we have calculated the two eigenvalues we need to sort them and then we need to select uh, the top for k uh, eigenvalues uh, if you have uh, let's say that uh, uh, five eigenvalues are there sort them in decreasing order and then select the top k values uh, uh, we will select two uh, values uh, when k is equal to two the meaning is we want uh, two linear discriminants here if you are interested in only one li linear discriminant in that case the value of k will be equal to one over here so based on the number of uh, linear discriminant we need to select the eigenvalues once you select the eigenvalues we will calculate the eigenvectors here to calculate the eigenvectors we use this formula that is uh, uh, sw inverse multiplied by sw sb minus uh, lambda i multiplied by w1 and w2 this w1 and w2 is just uh, uh, notational representations here uh, with the two classes if you have more than two classes it will be w1 w2 w3 and so on which is equivalent to zero now based on the number of classes you will get uh, so many number of simultaneous equations once you solve those uh, simultaneous equations you will get the values for this w1 w2 and so on because uh, these are the only unknown variables here because uh, sw is known to us sb is known to us lambda is known to us using all these things we can easily calculate the values of uh, w1 w2 and so on once you calculate this uh, w1 and w2 that is uh, eigenvectors we need to take the dot product between the eigenvectors and the original data so that we will get the linear discriminants uh, if the value of uh, uh, k is equal to 1 uh, we will uh, get one uh, linear discriminant if the value of k is equal to 2 we will get two linear discriminants and so on so these are the steps we need to follow to get the linear discriminants uh, in uh, supervised classification problem uh, where we are trying to convert higher dimensional data into lower dimension over here in the next video i will discuss uh, uh, how can we use the linear discriminant analysis on the given data set and how to get the linear discriminants uh, for the given data i will put the link for that video in the description below uh, just follow that video to understand the numerical or can say that the calculation part of uh, linear discriminant analysis i hope the concept of uh, linear discriminant analysis is clear if you like the video do like and share with your friends press the subscribe button for more videos press the bell icon for regular updates thank you for watching